because he he knows I worked in sea ice and I basically said, oh, I have to just hand it off the baton to you guys. So, mm-hmm. <laughs> so okay. So which one is of Zach? Uh, it said Arctic sea ice extent is currently the third lowest on record. And then it goes through the 2010s, 2000s, 1990s, and 1980s mean, and it just has that orange uh, line. Orange for the current. Yep. Yeah, just an, an updated graphic. An so updated what's graphic. Going on? So what's going on? This is really interesting because it's t- it's telling us that even with the, the the very high positive Arctic oscillation that did promote for a short burst a lot of sea ice growth, it's still when you track it from over the historical average of the last four decades, it's still at the lowest. And if you look, you can see on the orange graph, we're kind of towards May, kind of bumps up close to the uh, 2010s average. Mm-hmm. That's, that's where, if you look on that other graph, where that blue line kind of went above the 30-year median, that's, that's where we had the buildup. But yeah, even with the Arctic Oscillation promoting a short-lived burst in uh, sea ice, right. it's still lower than anything. And that is so disturbing, as one word. I mean, you know. take a look at the notes here. <laughs> about 290,000 square kilometers less than the 2010s mean. About 830,000 square kilometers less than the 2000 mean. About 1.3 million square kilometers less than the 1990s mean. And about 1.7 million square kilometers less than the 1980s mean so when you look at that you know we're you know so let's look at the uh let's look at the 20 uh, tens mean okay let's just pick june okay if you look across the the graph there it looks like it's about 11 point you know three so you know so 11.3 times 10 to the six so you know so it's about 11.3 square uh million square kilometers and, but then you look at the same dot in the 1980s, that's up to like almost 13. I mean, that's, that's like a 17, 20% drop. Right. And it keeps, it decreases the volume and um, the extent, right? That's what's going on as well. And we touched volume on and the extent. Yeah. Because the, the volume takes into account multi-year ice and, uh, if you have warmer oceanic waters, such as warmer sea surface temperatures, that's going to erode any ice so that any ice that tries to survive the summertime doesn't. Yeah, it's not going to be there anymore. Yeah. It was May, over what happened with May in the Arctic, right? We were talking about the uh, Siberia heat wave, but actually the big blob is over like the, the North Pole now. It's actually in the water. So is that contributing to what's going on with the orange graph is this high celsius it's, air it's probably having an effect but but because because of what zach and rick tolman looked at was more to bearing and chuck chi it's of kind of a little bit out of the sphere of direct influence from what's going on in the arctic because it's still a little cooler than usual here in alaska and the yukon but It'll be interesting to see what happens as the summer progresses. (laughs) All that ice melts. That's a very telling graphic there. Yeah. First of all, you you can see where that little blur between February and mid-March, it was above the 30-year median. And that's, and that was that burst of sea ice growth thanks to the, to the very cold conditions due to the very positive uh, AO conditions that we had. But then look how quickly it melted out. It quickly melted out. Once the AO went negative. Right around the end of March. Yep. Into April. And it's been... And it's it's sinking down where it's, you know, it's kind of one of the, you know, you look at it's below the 30-year median. It's one of the lower ones. It's not as low as for 17, 18, or 18, 19. You know, the green and red uh, right. lines. Very so true. it's not as bad as that. But the reason it's probably not as bad as that is because of that cold sus stretch that, was, that happened earlier. Mm-hmm. But, you know, 2017, 2018, just like hardly any ice formed. It just looked, I think it's just way down all around. 
Well, all the heat was on like the Siberian side, right? So this may have spared what's going on um, north of Alaska in that sea. Yeah. Did you argue yeah. the Chukchi Sea? <clears throat> and, and if you look on the right-hand graph there, what you see in red is where there's still ice. Okay. So if you look off the uh, northwest coast of Alaska, see that light blue? That's open water now. Oh, no. It's okay, open. yeah. So, so you still got some in the Gulf of Anadir, which is, uh, where, see where it says the B in Bering? Just kind of aim up and to the left. That's the mm -hmm. Gulf of Anadir. And then you've got the northeast of St. Lawrence, which is right above the S, E, and C. And then, you know, you've got some, you know, some other spots, but you can see some opening waters uh, west of, uh, I guess, north, northwest of St. Lawrence Island. You can see the open waters in the ch off the coast, northwest coast there, and the yellow is thinning ice. Yes, we see red there, it's still ice. Uh, the blue that you see off the northwest coast of Alaska is open water. Um, you can see some blue on the western side of the Bering Strait. The yellow is still ice, but it's but it's thinning out. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, so it's starting to open up more. And we're at the point now where the Chukchi Sea is going to be ice free during the summer, which is in its of itself is amazing. Just how fast it's accelerating to global warming or climate change. A lot of words. <laughs> okay. Change, yes. For it, yeah. Very Going amazing. back to the graph on the left, real quick, just as an overview. Um, the 1981 to 2010 mean and where 2020 ended up. Okay. Just comparing, you know, the last 2010, a few years, um, what was it? The red and the green line. Yes, 2020 is above that. However, overall, we're, we're under the median. Well, especially when you get past mid March. Exactly. It's definitely under the median. But if you look, look at the beginning, okay? Remember how I was talking about how there's a lot of open water still in November and December, mm -hmm. okay? You can see that in the blue line. There's very little ice. It's really lagging well below. And then it starts to increase rapidly towards the end of December and then to up through into February. That's when that cold stretch hit. How interesting. But then, God, it went up a That's, little bit, but barely, and then now it's just under the median and it went up and then when the arctic oscillation switched to the negative the whole thing came down and but over you can yeah. see the you can see the lag you can see the lag in the in the ice forming later in the year and then it increased rapidly because of the cold arctic oscillation conditions very interesting jim Jeez. this is why science is cool i know <laughs> It tells its story with through graphs. It's it's fun for me. I'm sure it's obviously fun for you. <laughs> okay. The last one um was the May sea surface temperature data. You sent that yesterday. I oh the see the, yeah, that, what, that one's really cool because well what I really you know, okay, we can look at at the, the left hand one, so it's the SST anomalies and then we'll look at the right-hand graph because the right-hand graph is like, wow. So <laughs> yes. But, but, but if you look at the, the Pacific and the Indian Ocean especially, in fact, all the major oceans are pretty much warmer than usual. And, it, mm -hmm. and they're comparing it, you know, May 2020, they're comparing it to the 81 to 2010, you know, the 30-year record. Right. As you can see, it's one and a half to three, four degrees warmer or more than, than that 30-year uh, average. And where you see it's white, it's, it's right at the average. And there's a La Nina, a weak La Nina we talked about. Yeah, it's in. Well, I've been saying the last couple of times we've met that it was going to be into a neutral, and then perhaps we saw hints of a, maybe a weak La Nina. We'll take a look at this. We have a weak La Nina. If you take a look at the right side graph now. Let me go to that one. There we go. La Nina. <laughs> but it's I like been this. Spotted. <laughs> includes a couple of surprises. <laughs> 
Surprise! <laughs> okay, so yeah, the La Nina is there. <laughs> you can see it, it's plain. And, and that's a scientist's way of saying, holy shit! <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> oh, okay, well... <laughs> but here's the interesting thing, okay? What, what caught my eye was not so much the La Nina, which, yeah, the, but the positive Indian Ocean Dipole. That caught my eye. Oh, as yeah. well as the positive PDO, Pacific Decadal Oscillation. So it, there's actually studies now sh showing what the, the research is indicating that the IOD, more so than ENSO cycles, controls what kind of precipitation Australia will experience. Oh, okay. So with the negative IOD, Australia should probably be a little on the wet side. That's and good. usually, yeah, they should get a little more precipitation. Now, they had the fires, then they, you know, then they had the torrential rains. So will this add to more flooding or help knock down the fires or both? Who knows? But you, but also, it does kind of agree that typically when you have a La Nina situation, there will be more precipitation over like the Indonesia region and, and that kind of stuff there. Yeah, um, shifts weather. And the, the negative PDO, it's really interesting because the, the negative PDO basically means it goes into the warm phase, but the warm phase is on the Eastern Pacific. Western Pacific is actually cooler than the Eastern Pacific. And then the cool phase, the cool PDO is the reverse with the, with the positive, like the, where the, the Eastern Pacific is cooler than the Western Pacific. It, I see. It's kind, of, kind of crazy. It is. Again, it's... <laughs> I, I did a whole bunch of video series explaining all of these things. So Yes, check out Science I, Talk with Jim Massa for more, <laughs> for more detail. Yeah. I, I did one on ENSO. I did one on the uh, Indian Ocean Dipole. I did one on the Pacific Decadal Oscillation. I did one on uh, the Arctic Oscillation, North Atlantic Oscillation, the Atlantic, the Arctic Dipole. I, I did like eight videos on all these things. Oh, wow. here. Like a series, yeah. A series of like, you know, 30, 40, 70 minute videos. <laughs> hey, they're in educational. It's it's almost like a college lecture. I have slide points and yeah, you know, like you know, PowerPoint and slide. I mean, the best way to to explain is that, you know, here the damn diagrams. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm very visual. That's why I love these graphics. But yeah, I did that whole series of video because to try and explain that here now we'll be talking for the next three hours. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh, go to Science Talk with Jim Massa for more. <laughs> it's just. It's there, so...